Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Investing in Trading Live, episode 986 of the podcast. We are nearing it. The close in on uh, Mark on 1000 episodes, hopefully later this month. Actually, it'll probably be in the uh, beginning of next month. We'll have our 1000th episode. But thank you for tuning into the show. We got our got a good show here today. We're going to do as we're watching some March Madness basketball. I thought it was a good time to do a market recap of the day. We've seen especially the crypto market see uh, see some some weakness coming in there. Bitcoin down to 63,000. Our helium token, everything, everything has been down uh, after some great, great moves to the upside. So that being said, we are seeing that slow down. The stock market is, is just continuing to chug along up about a half percent again today. And not quite to the all-time highs, but right at the all-time highs. So, so we'll do an, a market update for that as well. So as we get into that, there is risk in trading and investing. You can't ever lose money at one point in your life. This is strictly for entertainment purposes, purposes only. Mainly mine, <laughs> but hopefully you find it entertaining as well. So let's start with our stock market update. SPY currently close, closing the day at $515.71. That is the SPY, S&P 500. Down up about a half percent of the day, which is about $2.85. So this one, as I mentioned, is nearing the all-time highs once again. After we've seen... We've just seen a major bull market. I have it's funny. I'm looking at my my chart here on my platform, and I have several trend lines that shows the percent gains, and it just keeps getting higher and higher and higher, especially at the beginning of the year. But really, quite frankly, from October of 2022 is when the the bottom was for this the, the most recent drop. Obviously, we had some bigger drops in 2021, 20, uh, and uh, but we've just been seeing a bull market coming out of this. Uh, this recent drop from 2022 into 20, October of 2023 um, after a retracement there as well. So, so that, my friends, is your S&P 500 update for today. Dow Jones Industrial Average up 8.82% of the day, currently at 390.90. This one here also right at all-time highs. Looks just like the S&P 500, the SPY. ETF looks just like that same chart. Um, not a whole lot to speak about. NASDAQ, both the same story, not quite as, as high as the um, getting to the all-time highs, but we are still seeing that 438.57. Pulse market did drop a little bit, but you know it is that no real big issues there. IWM, which has been your lagger, but then again has been showing some strength here since... Mm, November of 2023, so the past few months here, currently at 202.10. Currently up about 27, uh, 25% since that that time of that retracement back to the upside. It, it did surpass a couple different supply zones as it got through those. And I do like that continuing to the upside. So that is your... Major market update, S&P 500, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and IWM. All right, other major notables, XLE was a, was a, was a driver of the day, up 1.14%. Same thing on the upside. It looks similar to the IWM, actually. Industrials was up 0.86% as well, which was about a buck. And this one has really soared. I mean, looking at the price chart, this one has, since the October, beginning of November, up about 27%. And USO, your oil ETF, currently coming off a demand zone that we talked about back in December that was derived from July of 2023, popped right out of that. Currently from that demand zone, it is up about 21%. So I do like that one. That was a perfect example of your 889 strategy that I'd like to use with options. Um, that being said, I did not do an options on this one. I did options on something else here that we'll get into in a little bit. One, uh, one of the stocks that had that was showing some pretty good premium. That's your ETF update. I just want to look at crude oil current price is in a supply zone, <clears throat> not not the best supply zone, but is at the 880, 888, sorry, 889 strategy that I look at as an odds enhancer, not as a actual trading 
area, just where could it go from there? Where is that? And what are the potentials, whether it's going to go up or down? I do like that as a supply zone, but there is another supply zone right above there that goes up to 85.61. So that could break and could bring it to there. Otherwise, there's another supply zone at 88.67, currently in a four-hour zone, but also a couple dailies there. So we do have several supply zones with crude oil. So, and we are high on the percent Bollinger Band. I, mean, I like this one, you know, seeing a little drop down, but only time will tell on that. Manage your risk accordingly. Gold, $2,158.95. Oof. Minnesota Gopher just won 73 to 72 against Butler. And with the last second shot that Butler missed, Minnesota hit two free throws to take the lead with, I think it was about six seconds left. So there you go, Minnesota Gophers in the NIT, which is the toilet bowl. All right. <clears throat> that being said, spot spot price is now at 2159.06. So this one here obviously has been going straight up from that demand zone that was back in October. We talked about that on the show several times. And just continuing to the upside from there, currently up um, well, a long ways from there. Anyways, I like that. Twenty one fifty nine, that's good for, for us gold holder holders. Silver, twenty four ninety six, that's also good for us gold or silver holders. <clears throat> this one here looks a very looks pretty similar to the gold chart. Actually, kind of choppy in a way, but gold has actually been a little bit stronger the way it looks on a price chart. If I brought a percent percentage gain, let's just say from for twenty twenty three, gold is up about twenty percent. Let's see what silver is for twenty twenty three. This is probably going to be a little bit less, but. Let's just uh, iron. Let's just check it out. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Up only five percent. So this one has been much more choppy than than gold. That being said, it is up a little bit. So better that is good for us gold holders or silver holders back at fifteen. All right, as I mentioned in the title in the beginning. With cryptocurrency, Bitcoin is down to 63,090, dropping down from the highs of over 72,000, I think over 73 to be exact, and uh, no real demand zones to speak of, maybe around 50,000, so it might be an opportunity around 50,000 to to get back in for those of you that, want, that did get out or want to buy more um, as an opportunity, not as a trading recommendation we know we don't give recommendations on the show there's no such thing it's just a uh, opinion um ethereum 3232 same story dropping down from the highs of 4068 roughly i do want to note with shiba for those shitcoin holders that went up about 300 percent. now we are down from the highs there 44%. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So, almost half of that has been retraced. SAMO, same story, currently up from that run about 335%. And that's back from October 2023. Solana did hit over 200 bucks per coin this past week, actually about 210, but now is at 173. So, that's showing a retracement as well, coming down. Mm, about 17% from its highs there from this last week here. HNT has really seen it get a, has been taking a beating. So this one here from its highs down about 40% from its highs. <clears throat> I do like this moving forward, but gosh, it's just not looking good right now for the last 17th till now. <laughs> last two days. No, that was February, last month. So HN, Helium HNT not looking too too sharp. Mobile here also seen a spike up here this past week. Went up about 192%. But that being said, back down about 40%, retraced 40% of those gains. So that moving forward doesn't show any, any real good demand zones. Although there is a nice one on a four-hour chart. I'm going to map that out. 
and we are popping off that right now and back into it so it doesn't look like that one's going to hold so there was a couple demand zones back around the 0 0.003 area as well where we had mapped out several weeks ago back in february so that is your mobile token update doubt or the dollar so the dollar is still in a bullish bias at about 103.84 so i do like any currencies against that the u.s dollar weakening against the u.s dollar so that is your u.s dollar update so this one here is really it's been pretty choppy and quite frankly hasn't done anything if you really look at it since april of 2022 so two years here where it's just it, it's moved a lot but it's just been sideways in my opinion so this one here uh, from uh, in the in the area of not no man's land but in a bullish bias that being said, euro dollar is in a bearish bias. That being said, I believe I am short this currently um, from about 0 0.0926. So dollar dollar nine basically dollar nine two six. So we'll see what happens with that. I'd like to see that come down to the dollar seven fifty zero seven fifty. Dollar yen. So what happened today, I believe it was today, the Japanese either increased or lowered their rates. I wonder I don't remember what that was. Let's see if I can get some news. Yeah, I forget what it was, but it was a pretty big movement. The dollar US dollar yen went up. That means they probably lowered it. I don't know. I'd have to go look. Matter of fact, let's look at Forex Factory here today. Forex Factory says, um, I don't want to give any misinformation, so I'm not even going to comment on that. So that's your dollar yen, currently at 151.27, currently in a bearish bias. Actually, no man's land right now. This has now reset from the 150 area, so uh, no action until we get above dollar, one, sorry, 152.50 or below 147.50 to give our bias. Pound dollar, currently in a bearish bias. I do like this one. Did not get a close below there, so we are doing nothing until, quite frankly, we get a close below a buck 26, 20, a buck 26, 77, or a buck 26, 75 to be exact. So we did get a pierce below that, but it did not close, therefore we are not doing anything with that. Aussie yen also in a bearish bias, which is good. And currently in no man's land as far as any opportunities there dollar is in a bullish bias but i don't like that because the, the new zealand dollar because i want i like the dollar long which means we'd be going against what we're what the u.s dollar is doing i like to try to kind of track what the dollar is doing and, and follow that so our our new zealand bear, bullish bias isn't telling us really what we want to do so there's really no action there until we get an area or really until the dollar does something different. New Zealand dollar, currently in a bullish bias. I need to get some better lines on here. So currently at 91.60. Let's see if we can get these on while we're speaking here. 90, so 90, 92.50. So in a bullish bias, we are, so basically in no man's land as of right now. 92.50. Uh, 90. We missed our opportunity here at 90.75, which was this week actually. So that opportunity has came and gone. We're going to change the color of these lines. Yep. So that was in a bullish bias, popped right off of that. So we, we could come back down there. So it might be an opportunity to go long at 97, sorry, 90.75, taking it up to 92.50. So we'll see what happens with that. So we're a little late to the party on the New Zealand yen. That happens sometimes. And, and also, no trade is, is, is a good trade. Aussie New Zealand, currently in a bearish bias, 
but in no man's land on the price chart waiting to get up to 109.25 or get a close below 106.75 so we'll see what happens with that dollar swiss franc in a bull bearish bias which is going against our u.s dollar so that will be also a no action for right now and aussie yen in a bullish bias and <coughs> looking to retrace back to 98.25 before we do anything with that so we're we're near current price near price on a couple couple of these currencies moving forward as for your stocks nvidia was up a percent turtle beach was up 2.69 and that one's been a really jumping they had earnings bad earnings and it jumped very interesting About 60, wow, 60%. 60% jump on bad earnings here over the past four days. Way to go, Turtle Beach. I do like that. That was one of my high flyers back in 2018 and 19. Apple up about, about, about 1.37%, 1 1.36 actually. And rounding out your stocks, I'm going to look at AFRM, AFRM, or uh, Firm Holdings, still above our demand zone, hoping that by the end of next week, I believe, is expiration, which means another 20% it would need to drop, actually more than that, but just over 20% <laughs> in the next week here. So that is not likely, but then again, anything is likely or possible in the financial markets. So never count your chickens before they hatch. That, my friends, is your stock market update for today. And today was and is still the 19th of March. And we are at about 10.18 in the p.m. So nice move uh, this week. I do like a firm continuing to just hold that area where we haven't basically doing nothing, collect our premium, and move on to our next opportunity. That being said, as always, collect your profits when they're given to you and protect your losses, keeping them small. Until next time, retire young, my friends.